All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Denton, and you are tuned in to the first ever TCU Athletics Google Plus Hangout. Good afternoon, wherever you are around the country or around the world watching on the World Wide Web. I'm John Denton, joined today by Chris Del Conte, our Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, also Wendell Barnhouse from Big12.com, Matt Lewis, the Assistant Athletic Director for Equipment Services, and David Roditi, the TCU men's head tennis coach. And uh, Chris, I'm going to start with you first off. Everybody's wanting to know a lot of traffic today around TCU, people coming tr to try to get a look at the stadium. Can you give us an update on what the latest is on the stadium as it uh, gets ready for the start of the season? Uh, we're moving in the right direction. As you, I think we have what uh, September 8th, so I can guarantee you the stadium will be done by September 8th. But today they're just finishing the, uh, the finishing touches on the west side and the east side is progressing nicely. So we have uh, about 700 people working here 18-hour uh, days, and uh, uh, they tell me this morning's meeting at uh, 9 o'clock that uh, we're, we're on schedule or a little bit ahead of schedule. What is it, if, if one thing stands out to you right now, Chris, as the stadium construction nears completion, what, what stands out to you as an aspect that maybe the fans are not aware of yet that they'll enjoy? I really think it's the intimacy of the stadium. When you walk in the stadium, I think you'll, you'll, you'll think it's bigger than 45,000. Uh, I think the attention to detail, we, the, the architect and the, uh, the, 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 the original designers really try to get back to uh, the Art Deco of the 1930s. They've captured the spirit. Um, the, the, the finishing touches are amazing. I can't wait for our fans to walk through and have their initial walk through and go, wow, because I think we've captured the wow factor. There might be bigger stadiums in the country, but there's not a finer facility in America, I can guarantee that. You're a guy that's been around intercollegiate athletics a long time. Since you arrived, have, have you ever experienced anything like what you've been a part of at TCU, and especially the last nine months or so with the uh, completion of the stadium, the move to the Big 12, and all the other things that are happening related to TCU athletics? Uh, no, I was just visiting with a couple of ladies uh, on Monday and Tuesday in Dallas, and to think about what's happened to this institution in the last three years. Two BCS bowl games, three we've been, you know, participating in two different conference moves to finally get back to a place, the Big 12, all the excitement. Uh, but you, we've gone from elation to, uh, uh, you know, what's going to happen. I mean, you know, we've invested in Rolaids because it seems to be one of those times where he's just been going up and down and trying to keep, keep your emotions in place. It's exciting, but I tell you at the same time, it's been pretty nerve-wracking, but to come out of it to where we're at today and to see the light at the end of the tunnel is pretty gratifying. You know, a lot of fans think that because it's summertime and the teams aren't necessarily competing that there's not a lot going on. Obviously, the stadium is, is a big part of that. But earlier in the summer, you and I were part of uh, the convention over in Dallas, the NACTA convention, where we had two honorees. Frank Wendigger won the Corbett Award from NACTA, and then James Cash got the Pioneer Award from the uh, McClendon Minority Scholarship Foundation. Those are two major awards in college athletics. Can you comment on those, Chris? Well, I think he, first of all, let's just talk about Frank for a moment. I mean, he had, uh, you know, he's a student athlete here and has a life career at TCU, and uh, you know, he did a wonderful job uh, uh, as our director of athletics and has been one of our, you know, pillars in, in our community for a long, long time. Uh, um, so for him to receive that award is just a true testament to his. Uh, the stick to and his <laughs> commitment to the institution. I think a lot of people don't uh, don't or, or, or don't recall, but uh, ca catastrophic injuries and, the, and the, having the NCAA ability to pay for that. That was Frank really pushed for that. We had a student out here that had a, 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 a neck break way back when, and, there, and he's the one that came through and really put forth the the legislation to have the NCAA help pay for for that. James Cash, on the other hand, is the first African American. Uh, uh, to play in the Southwest Conference in basketball. He was a true pioneer. And what he's done with his career, going on to get his Ph.D., working at Harvard, being an uh, owner of the, uh, you know, the, the Boston Celtics, he's been a true horn frog throughout his life. His wife still lives in, and his mother still lives in Fort Worth, Texas. He comes home. But both of them had trials and tribulations that we just can't imagine today because we sit in a different position. And what they've gone through uh, and what they did for this institution, both individuals, is... Uh, this is a tremendous. It means a lot to us. Yes, absolutely. Both gentlemen, real credits to TCU. We're going to stay uh, on uh, a move to football real quick. We're going to we're going to talk with uh, Wendell Barnhouse from Big12.com. Just got a headline for you here that uh, Coach Gary Patterson has just announced that Randy Shannon, the former head coach at Miami, has been hired as a linebackers coach 
at TCU as uh, and there was a lot of lot of talk and speculation. But Wendell, let's talk about the Big 12 for a moment and what TCU fans can expect. The Frogs square right in the middle of the Big 12 preseason media poll at number five. They were one of four teams to get first place votes. Your thoughts on uh, the Frogs' placement as they head into the first year in the Big 12? Well, I think that's probably a pretty good place uh, based on the, how strong this conference is going to be. Uh, John, you were at Media Days earlier in the week, and there was a lot of talk, uh, a lot of people pointing out that the Big 12 is it's unusual this year. There are three defending conference champions, TCU being one of them, in the Big 12 this year, and I think there are six teams that won 10 games last year. I don't think this conference has probably ever been stronger as far as football is concerned. I think this is going to be a really exciting race. Uh, and for TCU, I've seen a lot of uh, you know predictions, people looking at it to say that you know the first part of the schedule, TCU could actually you know halfway through maybe be seven and zero or whatever. But uh, just glancing at the schedule, uh, welcome to the Big Twelve, guys, because you close with the at Oklahoma State, at West Virginia, Kansas State at home, at Texas. And then Oklahoma at home. I don't know if there's another team in the country that might have a tougher five-game stretch, particularly with three of them on the road. So uh, it's really going to be challenging for TCU. But uh, as Chris mentioned, and I think a lot of people understand, uh, recently TCU has proven and they earned the uh, invitation to the Big 12. This is no charity case. I think big, you know, TCU is well positioned to be competitive in the Big 12. It's just uh, it's a tough year to be coming in because this is a really tough conference top to bottom. Yeah, and, and not just within regional media, but also the league getting a lot of respect. Wendell, USA Today has six of the ten teams in the Big 12 in the top 25. ESPN, the same in their, uh, their rankings. Uh, this league is getting a lot, probably bumping up right against the SEC in terms of respect nationally. Yeah, and you look at, you know, Kansas State, you know, they're picked to finish sixth. Last year they were picked to finish eighth and finished second. Uh, you know, and Kansas State won a lot of close games last year. They've got most of their top players coming back, whereas teams like Oklahoma State that won the league last year has got to replace its record-setting quarterback and its wide receiver. Uh, also, uh, you know, Oklahoma's got to replace some guys at receiver. Uh, Baylor, obviously, has got to replace all three of its, you know, Robert Griffin III, you know, the Heisman-winning quarterback, but also their leading rusher, leader, leading receiver. So, you know, you look at uh, a school like uh, Kansas State with a lot of players coming back, they're not getting a lot of respect, but I think part of that is they look at everybody else in the league and wonder, hey, how can Kansas State finish against those teams? So, you know, Kansas State and TCU right there in the middle of the pack. I think one of those teams, if you want to pick a dark horse, one of those teams could be the dark horse. I think, you know, if TCU avoids injuries and, you know, can prove that it's got enough depth, I know Coach Patterson is always talking about, you win with your twos and your threes. You don't worry about your first team. It's how much depth you have. And you look at the end part of that schedule that I mentioned. If TCU can avoid injuries, keep everybody healthy, and they've got enough depth at the end of the year, they could be a team that's definitely uh, kind of a dark horse to get up to the top of the standings. Absolutely. I've, we've got an Internet question. Wendell, I'm going to hold till later in the show. I'm going to come back to you. A question uh, regarding some of the talent in the Big 12. We'll, we'll hold on that right now. In a moment, we're going to go to David Roditi, the men's tennis coach, but we're going to see some new equipment that uh, the Frogs, uh, Matt Lewis, has uh, has pulled together. He's getting the Frogs ready. TCU now a 100% Nike school, thanks to uh, Mr. Del Conte's work. And Matt, what can you tell us about what the fans can expect to see the Frogs in? They always say, if you if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. You're in charge of the look and feel of this team. So what can you show us? Well, right behind my shoulders here, you'll see a couple of different uh, looks that we have uh, for the upcoming season. We, we debuted those looks in 2011. We upgraded our color of purple uh, to go back to our roots, so to speak, to a little darker, richer purple. Uh, and then our fonts have changed, which, uh, again, took, took effect with football last year. But you'll see them come out this year in volleyball, men's and women's basketball, uh, and then some of our other sports as well. So we're excited about those things that Nike has uh, worked in conjunction with us uh, to, again, upgrade our fonts and our colors. Uh, and then we'll have some other uh, equipment, little uh, changes here or there in terms of helmets. We've got some upgraded technologies there uh, that we're going to be utilizing this year with helmets. Uh, and then shoes, uh, Nike is always making a lighter uh, 
faster shoe, if you will. Uh, so we're obviously going to be wearing the uh, latest and greatest styles uh, as you speak. Uh, so, and then uh, again, just excited about those few little things there to come this year. What are some of the innovations? You mentioned the uh, the headgear, Matt. What are some of the other innovations that uh, fans may not be able to see from the stands that uh, that Nike has come through, come up with, or any of the manufacturers for that matter? Sure. Uh, when it comes to uniforms specifically, uh, the uniforms themselves are much lighter than they ever were. Uh, you know, you you pick up this. Uh, jersey and pant and we're talking ounces now we're not even talking close to a pound uh, when we're talking about jerseys and, and pants when it comes to shoes uh, they are debuting some of their talent to give them a little better traction uh, whenever they're running so that's a few things they've uh, debuted that technology two years ago but it was only in a single style of shoe they've now got it to where uh, you know it's it's in almost every style of shoe that they offer now so in layman's terms, that, that sole, as it flexes, it's almost like a cat claw. It will come out and, and dig into the turf and then recess as, uh, as need be? That is correct. Now, we're only talking millimeters. We're not talking inches or anything like that. So we're, we're not going to be uh, digging way down into the soil or, or grass or anything. Don't worry, groundskeepers. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a nice little addition for us. Yeah, forget about the groundskeepers. I was thinking about the long sock era was about to uh, reemerge with, uh, with those type cleats uh, coming out. Matt, we'll come back to you. We've got one more question for you a little later on. Right now we're going to switch to tennis and David Roditi, who joins us live from the TCU Tennis Center, the Friedman Tennis Center. David, you've gotten pretty innovative since you've gotten back on campus with what you're doing at tennis matches to build – attendance, some of the uh, the best attendance in college tennis. Tell us about some of those. Thank you, John. First of all, thanks a lot for having us out here. This is great. We're all about innovation. We're all about doing the latest possible thing to promote not just uh, TCU, but TCU tennis. So thanks a lot for having us here. Yeah, I thought that uh, we have probably the most beautiful tennis facility in the nation. So why not get the whole community? TC, uh, Fort Worth is a great tennis community. There are tons of country clubs just within five, ten minutes of campus. So we thought, why not let all these families, a very family-oriented sport, very family-oriented campus, let's get them out here and have a fun, festival-like activities here at the tennis matches. And I couldn't believe that we're in, in two years, we're up to third in attendance in the nation. So that's uh, due to all the community involvement. We have a committee, Keep It in the Purple Committee, it's called, and they do an amazing job. Talk about your facilities there, because TCU's been a, a tennis power for years. The Friedman Tennis Center is among the best in the country, and uh, really a great facility to draw to uh, for both men's and women's tennis at TCU, and a lot of that started way back. And I also want to ask you about Tut Bartson, the uh, legendary tennis coach that you played under at TCU. Talk about the facilities, and also give us an update on Tut. Yes, uh, the facility was built 35 years ago, and it, it hardly hit, has been needed any upgrades at all. That's how, that's how amazing it was back in the day. It's a beautiful facility. This used to be a golf course, so you got all these trees and all this green. There's no way you could possibly build something like it these days with the, with the lack of land everywhere. It's just naturally beautiful. Um, as you can see behind me, you can see the scoreboard in the back, and the, the courts are sunken in. We have 22 outdoor courts. We have five indoor courts. So uh, definitely Mr. Delcani reminds me every single time that I see him that a facility is definitely not an excuse that we can use here for a lack of success. Uh, Coach Barson, he's great. He's, uh, he's still teaching every day. If you know Coach Barson, you know that, that that's exactly what he's going to be doing until the last day. I have lunch with him every single Tuesday. He's... Uh, you know, up and, and about all day long, and uh, he's doing great. He gives me input every single match. He comes out. He's not a big fan of the music and the introductions and all the, all the circus that we got going on around the, the tennis. Uh, we want it to be an event. Uh, but he, you know, as long as we put a little Johnny Cash in there, he's okay with that. All right. Well, speaking of Johnny Cash and uh, walking the line, you've got a new line to walk this year in the Big 12. Uh, fans are probably not as familiar with some of the powers, obviously Texas, Texas Tech, Baylor, all strong programs, but talk about the rest of the Big 12 and what fans can expect when they come to matches next year. 
Yes, uh, when, when they come to the matches. Well, we have six men's tennis programs, and you could literally be 25 ranked in the nation and be number six in the conference. It's, that's how good the conference is. Baylor has won a championship. Texas has been a finals, finalist just recently, a Final Four a few times. Uh, and then Oklahoma, as of the last two years, they're, they're the team to beat. They, they won the conference last year. So, and and I, I, I expect our team to be right up there with, with them. That's, that's why I'm here. I believe that's, that's uh, why I got the opportunities to, to compete, just like the way it was when I was in, in school here, when I, we were in the Southwest Conference, and there was nothing more uh, uh, rewarding than, than to beat all those big schools here in Texas. Uh, we talked about the Big 12. How about your team specifically? You've got some players coming back, and you've got some depth uh, waiting in the wings. Tell us about your players. Yeah, we have a we have a fairly young team. We have uh, a great group of uh, last year they were freshmen, now they will be sophomore. They're led by sophomore Nick Chapel, who just today, actually about two hours ago, beat the Big 12 Player of the Year, uh, Kosmin Pavel from Oklahoma, who I would have said he's a, the player to beat next year. And Nick, uh, just a sophomore coming up, he just beat him in straight sets today. He lost to him six one six two three months ago so uh, that's a great sign we couldn't be happier uh, great things to come and he's leading a, a great group of uh, mostly American tennis team with a few of uh, Latins as you would expect all right David Roditi we'll come back to you in just a little bit I want to go back to Chris Del Conte real quick we've got an internet question from uh, Joe X and Joe X wants to know what's the story Chris on Lupton Stadium, there's a lot of talk about renovations and expansion of Lupton Stadium for TCU baseball. Uh, well, we've engaged an architect uh, to come and look at uh, uh, improving the facility. I think the facility was coming on 10 years old right now. It's, it's served us well, but uh, as we know, the name of the game is recruiting and, and continuing to invest in our facilities. One of the things that we don't want to do is, is rest on our laurels. Uh, and you think about Damon Carter Stadium was built in 1930. I think we had a renovation in 1956 at the upper deck, and nothing was done until this past year. So we want to always continue to update, uh, improve. Uh, uh, we went down and played a uh, the Super Regional and saw A&M's new facility. It was a $30 million facility. Texas built a brand-new facility, uh, uh, renovated to their facility. Uh, I want to say Texas Tech. Everyone in the Big 12 has done something um, to the facilities. And with, the, with A&M leaving the Big 12, going to the SEC, we started to look at all the baseball facilities and said, you know what? It's a marquee sport for us, and we want to make sure that we do uh, we renovate that facility. So we're in the, if you will, the silent phase of the facility of the, the project. We got our we got our drawings done. We have all the architectural uh, things that we need, and we're coming out. I think we're coming on a couple million dollars raised. We're so we're excited about that. As I said before, but my big push right now is going to be uh, Daniel Meyer, and uh, we met last week, and we're starting that 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 massive renovation project because I do believe. That Daniel Meyer, we could be something special in basketball, and we should be something best special in basketball, both men's and women's. But if you look at the Big 12 and all their facilities, they're tremendous. And, we, and our jobs as administrators, John, you and I, and Maddie Lou, is to make sure that we give our coaches all the tools necessary to be successful on whatever endeavor they are and whatever endeavor they, they choose to be. And, and as I always teach Coach Roditi, he has the finest facility in America. Kids come for facilities, kids come for great institutions, but he has all the tools necessary. We believe we hire the right coach to take us to a position where we can win a national championship in tennis. And, and across the board, we have great coaches here, but we also got to make sure that we're recruiting great students. And as much as we, we love Texas Christian University, uh, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, they all love their institutions. They're doing the things they need to do to try to recruit the same student athletes we are. Uh, and I will say I don't think there's a finer academic institution than Big 12 than Texas Christian University. But at the same time, we just can't rest on our laurels and have uh, and say, here we go. We've got to continue to improve. Absolutely. Nice job, by the way, bringing up Daniel Meyer Coliseum because we got a message on Twitter from Phil in the upper deck. He was wondering about Daniel Meyer. So uh, that is, uh, that's, a, that's a good answer there, Chris. Thanks very much. Let's go back to Wendell Barnhouse uh, at Big12.com. Wendell, we were talking earlier about uh, the way that TCU stacked up as a team. A lot of folks asking questions about Casey Paha, why he didn't make all conference teams, why he's not ranked higher among quarterbacks in the Big 12. And all you have to do is look at the list. You got Colin Klein at Kansas State, Geno Smith at West Virginia, Dane Christ, who's new, but 
He played at Notre Dame under Charlie Weiss, Landry Jones, and then you throw Casey Paha in there. Tough league to be a quarterback in, no? Absolutely. And, John, before I answer that, I want to tell Chris, with all the construction you guys have done and how quickly Eamon Carter got renovated, when you're done with all that, I want to put you in charge of fixing the freeways around the Metroplex, okay? Because apparently you get guys to work awful fast. Um, now, about the quarterbacks, yeah, Casey Paul, I mean, he's, you know, preseason is one thing in the votes and it's saying all these watch lists and everything. He could very easily end up being the all-conference quarterback at the end of the year. But you look at a guy like Landry Jones. He's been starting almost for four years. He came back for his senior year, and a lot of people have said, oh, he's probably going to be the preseason offensive player of the year. Well, here's Geno Smith from West Virginia who's never even played in the league, and he's voted by the media as a preseason all-conference uh, uh, as far as the offensive player of the year. I think a lot of that for Smith is the fact that West Virginia put up 70 points in the Orange Bowl against Clemson, and I think a lot of people noticed that and saw that. And, you know, Casey had a really good sophomore season, and, you know, obviously broke some of Andy Dalton's record, which, record, which is pretty uh, impressive. But even a guy like Colin Klein, who set a rushing record for touchdowns by a quarterback uh, in FBS, nobody's ever scored more touchdowns as a quarterback in FBS history. Well, he's not preseason all-conference or as far as conference player of the year or anything like that. So, yes, it's a very tough league to be a quarterback in, but I think TCU with Paul Hall and with the weapons around him, to me, he's a lot like Geno Smith in the fact that he had a good year last year and he's got the weapons around him to have an even better year. That's not totally the case with a guy like Landry Jones at Oklahoma. They've got some wide receiver questions. Uh, you know, Texas Tech, we didn't even mention Seth Daigie. There are five schools with quarterbacks who started last year coming back. Daigie had a great season last year. So, yeah, there are a lot of tough quarterbacks in this league. And I think for Casey, it's just like, hey, Go out and play, prove you're good, and we'll see what happens at the end of the year. All right, I want to make you aware that Super Frog has joined us here. I see that. Studio. He has a question. He says, are people, are fans really aware, TCU fans aware of what it's going to be like in the Big 12? I've told folks, if you like the Baylor game last year or the Boise game last year or even the Rose Bowl the year before, you're going to love the Big 12 because it comes down to the last five minutes of the game almost every week. Yeah, and I think the best thing for TCU is, I mean, from, from being around and working at the Star-Telegram for years, understanding the, uh, as Chris has always put it, kind of the wandering in the wilderness aspect for TCU as far as conferences were concerned. I think one of the problems that TCU has always had with changing all these conferences was that they didn't have any real natural rivals. I don't think the fans, you know, even though they were playing some really good football programs in different conferences, you know, the fact now is that uh, you know TCU went from being kind of an island isolated in the middle of the Big 12. Now they're part of the Big 12. They're they're you know they're not you know uh, they're, they're in Texas against other Texas schools and Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. I think it's going to be a uh, really increase the rivalries. I think you know Eamon Carter is really going to be packed not only with fans coming from out, but I think TCU fans are going to be more interested to come out and see a Texas Tech or a Baylor than they would have been a, a team like you know like a San Diego State comes into Fort Worth. I just don't think there's that much uh, buzz as far as TCU fans are concerned. There's going to be a lot more buzz, and the fact that the competition is so good, I think that's going to get a lot of TCU fans saying, hey, we go to Texas, they got 103,000. We can't get 103 in our stadium, but we need to sell it out and, and pack it. Absolutely. All good points, Wendell. Before we go to David Roditi and ask him to respond to Chris Del Conte's guaranteed national championship in men's tennis, I'm going to ask Matt Lewis uh, here as we start to close Wendell started, uh, talked about all the different places that the Frogs have to go play. What challenges does that give your crew, Matt, when it comes to footwear and, and other equipment that uh, when you're going to a place that maybe the Frogs haven't been before? Well, we'll have to do uh, some research. Uh, great, thankfully, I've, I've been at several of those places, uh, you know, from previous stint in the Big 12 myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm familiar with a bunch of them, but at the same time, they probably upgraded surfaces uh, newer facilities, those type of things. So we'll do our homework uh, with the different equipment managers who have visited there most recently, uh, just so that way we know that we've got the best possible footwear. Uh, we're prepared for any type of atmosphere changes in terms of fans and how they react to us, and then obviously be ready for the facility uh, and, and what that facility might hold for us. So uh, it, that'll be exciting for us. Our travel's a lot less. Uh, except for West Virginia and Iowa State, uh, 
all the rest of those schools are easy drives uh, for us. So we're, we're excited about the travel part, uh, and it'll be fun going into those big-time stadiums week in, week out. Yeah, Matt Lewis, a, uh, an alum of Marshall. He's a member of the Thundering Herd. You know a little bit about that area up near West Virginia, don't you? Yes, I do, and uh, I am looking forward to go to Mor going to Morgantown and playing. There uh, will be a lot of family and friends there, so uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I was looking for that Marshall helmet on top of your uh, credenza there. I don't see it. We'll, we'll get that on on the next show. Okay, David Roditi, you've got to tell us real quick, uh, how soon are the Frogs going to win a national championship in men's tennis? I think we have a good shot at it 2014 or 2015. We have a great class as a sophomore, and if we can build on that class by 2015, which Mr. Del Carney already promised that we're going to be hosting the NCAAs, and he'll do everything he can so that we do that, uh, I believe we'll be playing for a national championship in 2015. All right, Mr. Del Carney, rebuttal. I feel like Ted Koppel here all of a sudden. We've gone real serious. We're putting people on the spot. Any rebuttal, uh, no. Mr. Director of Athletics? Not at all, John Boy. I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, you're going to put uh, David Roditi on the spot. I think that's what I love about Coach Roditi. He, uh, he strives for, for the very best. And then when we, when we interviewed Dave, and he says, you know, when I was at TC, we finished uh, number two in the country. We know we could win the championship. He's recruiting that way. Whether, he do, whether we do or do not, the idea that the effort and the strife is there, that I, and the strides that he's making to get us there, that's, that's, that's all we ask for. I do believe that uh, we have an opportunity. Our goal is to host a Big 12 tennis championship, and our, host, goes to, our goal is to host a national championship here because we, have, we want to show the, fine, the country the finest facility, in the, in, 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 I believe, in college tennis right here in Fort Worth, Texas. But... Uh, it's recruiting, and uh, he's recruiting, and we're heading in the right direction. So it should be exciting for tennis, but more importantly, this coming year for all of our sports is super exciting because now we're any, you know, we've been on a journey for the last 16 years, and to get back, as Chuck Nine has told us, welcome home. To be back where uh, college athletics is to, meant to be played regionally, with teams that uh, are going to spark water cooler conversations, internet chatter back and forth. It's just fantastic. It's awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank all of our guests today and congratulate you on being part of the first ever TCU Athletics Google Plus Hangout. Chris Del Conte, Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. Wendell Barnhouse from the Big 12. Wendell, thank you. We'll do it again. Matt Lewis, Assistant AD for Equipment Services. And David Roditi, future national championship men's tennis coach at TCU. Remember, you can get information on TCU Athletics 24-7 at gofrogs.com. Make your gifts to TCU Athletics at tcufrogclub.com. Until then, I'm John Denton saying so long. We'll see you next time on TCU Athletics Google Plus Hangout. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Wendell.